Hello and welcome everybody to another Murders at Karlov Manor Draft. Yesterday, we had a really nice run with a really sweet doppelgang deck, and now we are sitting at rank number 33. The next milestone is very, very close, right around the corner, and uh, hopefully we can do have another good run and uh, finish in the top 30s, maybe with the two in front of our number, but of course we're going to have to open some good stuff. Before the draft fires, I do want to give a shout out to... Uh, my Patreon channel, all the folks who uh, subscribe to the Patreon, I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. It allows me to continue making content like this. If you're interested in supporting the channel, uh, the link in is in the description below. So uh, please check it out. Okay. Opened the doppelganger yesterday. Can we one-up the doppelganger? Mm, not quite. I mean, it's pretty hard to one-up doppelganger just because it's such a fun card to draft around. But this is also a pretty good pack. Um, the, the rare, of course, is I believe the card that we're going to take. Sharp-Eyed Rookie is pretty great. Two mana, two, two Vigilance. And then whenever you play something bigger that in power or toughness, it gets a plus one, plus one counter, and you investigate. Absolutely love this card. One of the premier two drops in the set. And green is one of my favorite colors. Green and white are the two best colors in the set. So happy to take that. But Eliminate the Impossible is fine. Case of the Burning Masks is decent. Get a leg up. Deadly Complication. Uh, all those cards are cards I'm pretty happy playing in my deck. Slice from the Shadows is a fine removal spell. And also shout out to Granite Witness and Season Consultant. So very deep pack, which isn't always the case in this format. But for us, we are taking the Sharp-Eyed Rookie. Okay, moving on to this pack. This one's interesting. Black is generally a color I try to avoid. I'm not going to lie. As much as possible. This is a really cool rare, though. It's a 2-mana two 2-1. Two uh, basically, you make a 2-mana two 2-1 two mana skeleton. It's basically suspected. When your skeleton dies, you get to pay 2 mana and basically Demonic Tutor. You get to search your library for a card. So I think it's the it's basically, do I want to take the cool, interesting rare here in case of the stash skeleton, or do I just take Shock, which is the best common in the pack? And you know me. I want to try the rares. I still want to try a lot of the cool cards. It can't be too bad. It can't be too bad as it is a rare. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it can't be too bad as in it's a 2-mana, two 2-1 two menace creature that gets you value in the late game. I do love me a shock, but I want to try Case of the Stashed uh, Skeleton and see how this goes. And now we have an interesting pick here between Long Goodbye and Neighborhood Guardian. Neighborhood Guardian is one of the best uncommons in the set, but Long Goodbye is a nice way to follow up the Case of the Stashed Skeleton. So... I think Neighborhood Guardian is a significantly better card, which you look at this in the beginning and you're like, oh, they're very similar. They're both good two mana spells, but I do think Neighborhood Guardian is significantly better. However, I don't want to go away immediately from our first pick of Sharp-Eyed Rookie, which I believe is about as good as Neighborhood Guardian, maybe even a little better. And I want to take the long goodbye, cut off the black, and go back-to-back -back black cards to try to set up for a nice black deck. We're not really sure what our second color is going to be, but... Um, Hopefully it's black green. Hopefully it's black green. We'll see how things go. Here we have lots of solid uncommons. Fester Leech, Vengeful, uh, Fetch for, Fester Leech, Vengeful Tracker is an OK2, and Private Eye is, of course, great in the Blue White Detectives deck. And then Gadget Technician stands out for commons. Bite Down on Crime is also great. And Topiary Panther is nice to fix. But I'm a big fan of Bite Down on Crime. We do have one removal spell already. We have the Sharp-Eyed Rookie. I do think I like it more than the Fester Leech. I think it's enough better than Fester Leech where I do want to take the Bite Down on Crime here in the pack. I do think I, I, I like it a good amount better than Topiary Panther, at least to start. Once I figure out, you know, some... If I have a lot of evidence or I'm trying to... Um, uh, splash a different color, then I can move into taking the Panther. Here's my thing, though. I haven't really drafted black-green very much, right? I haven't drafted black-green very much. So is it one of those... Is it an aggressive color combination? I'm not even, I'm not even that sure. Uh, here, what do we have? There's a deadly complication that I can play on the splash. Um, there's an unscrupulous agent that I can take on my color. There's also sanguine savior. Had we moved into black white, that would have been a thing. I guess I'm going to take an unscrupulous agent and uh, take it from there. Although this makes this deck look a lot less... Um, this is certainly not like an aggressive card that you want to play in your deck. So, But our curve is looking pretty nice so far. 
This is a pack where uh, Out Cold is not something that I'm too interested in. Rakish Scoundrel is pretty bad, even in black green, in my opinion. I think I'd rather have something like a Crowd Control Warden or a Crocodile. So, do I want a Crocodile or a Warden? Um, I think I'm going to take the Crowd Control Warden here. It's just a bigger creature in general. So, I just like the fact that when you flip this up every now and then, you can just get them for like six. Wow, so we have Double Forensic Researcher Spell Snare. I didn't even know that was in the set. And Clandestine Meddler. I'm just going to take the Meddler to stay on color here. Um, I do like Forensic Researcher, but Black does seem relatively open, and this is a fine three drop to play. But I do like the thought or the idea of drafting a deck with a bunch of evidence cards, which is pretty nice. And I'm not sure if that's what Black Green's trying to do, but of course I'd have to splash blue if I wanted to do something like that. Here I'm going to take Fairy Snoop. Uh, surprisingly in Black Green, this actually has a reasonable win rate, which tells me that Black Green is maybe not looking to necessarily be super aggressive, um, but nothing else really in the pack for us. I'm not really a big fan of Flotsam and Jetsam or the Aftermath Analyst. So let's take the Fairy Snoop here and see what happens. Now I'm going to take Rubble Belt Maverick. I suppose uh, we could be setting up for... I don't know, maybe some kind of grindy-ish mid-range black-green deck. I'll take Maverick over the Repeat Offender. If we can get some Insidious Roots, maybe we can make that happen. Now we have a V2 Ghazi Inspector. A nice creature, too, because it works with the Sharp-Eyed Rookie, right? Right now, our deck's not especially great with Sharp-Eyed Rookie. Here I'll take... Um... God, I dislike Rakus Scoundrel so much. I'm going to take Hotshot Investigators because I think that's just a better card that... I might want to splash. And we table the Fester Leech. So black is very open. It's just it's not that strong. Uh, so <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens here. I would like to pick up some of the signpost uncommons to really make this deck work. Um, we're setting up nicely. We have a little bit of self-mill going on with the Maverick and the Fester Leech. Um, and we have some ways to go kind of late. So hopefully we can find some ways to... Uh, Win with inevitability. All right, Illicit Masquerade. I still don't know if this card is good. I still don't know if this card is good. Uh, there's a Tunnel Tipster, though, so I think I'm going to take that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like like a, this is a... I know this feels like a Sam Black thing, like a Sam Black creation. I'm sure he can figure out a way to make that card good, but I love me a Tunnel Tipster. It's exactly what this type of deck probably wants. And this time, I am not going to take Niv-Mizzet, okay? Not going to take the Niv-Mizzet. We are even worse set up this time around. We don't have that much fixing, so I'm not going to take it here. Uh, it's between the Vengeful Creeper or the Culvert Ambusher. And um, I actually prefer the Vengeful Creeper. I just like the fact that it's a bigger body. And for five, you get a 5-5. Five -five. And uh, the Disenchant effect is pretty handy. Not the most exciting second pick, but we'll, pl we'll play it in our deck and uh, see what happens. Here, we do need some extra interaction, so let's go ahead and take Extract the Confession. This is Black's Best Common. Another consideration here would be the Exit Specialist on the Splash. But I think Extract the Confession is about on par um, with Exit Specialist, so I'll take it here. Especially if this is on the Splash. Uh, hopefully, we table the Fester Leech again. Again, that's assuming we have things to do with our graveyard, but happy enough with Extract the Confession here. Now we're looking at Extract the Confession, Long Goodbye, and Bite Down on Crime as removal effects for our deck. And then the Hotshot, I don't know what it's... It's just, it's just hanging out here, but right now we don't have that much fixing. Okay, so now we have a real choice. I don't think it's Tunnel Tipster. It's between Hard Hitting Question and Glint Weaver, right? So what, 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 what is the better option here? Um, hmm. You know, this feels like a deck that's trying to go long, right? This feels like a deck that's trying to get to the late game. We have a few removal spells already. I want to draft a mid-range deck. And I think Glintweaver is exactly the type of card that we need. We don't have anything super expensive right now. So let's take the Glintweaver here. And, um, yeah. Let's take the Glintweaver here and, uh, do something fun. Do something fun. Okay, so here's my question. Do we just take Extract the Confession or Buried in the Garden? Um, Buried in the Garden is a better card. Our mana isn't great right now. We don't have any fixing. So the question is, is it worth it to splash white for Buried in the Garden or do we just take Extract? You know, I think we, we're going to have a lot of... 
I think we're going to be able to collect evidence six pretty well with Rebel Up Maverick and Fester Leech. I'm going to take Extract the Confession here as another cheap interactive spell over Buried in the Garden, mostly because we're already halfway through pack two and we don't have any fixing. Because we don't have any fixing, I just want to take the on color card here. Pick six, super happy about locks it on eavesdropper. I'm sure we're all looking at this uh, elk, crocodile, elk, turtle, defender thing, but its ability is only really cool if you can use the blue ability to draw cards. Let's take the eavesdropper here. And now do we want to take Rubble Belt Maverick or agent number two? Hmm. I don't think I want to play, play two Rubble Belt Mavericks in this deck. This does feel like a deck where Unscrupulous Agent's pretty good, uh, along with um, if we can get some Toxin Analysis as a trick to trade some of these 1-1s, one that will be something we want to do. Here, Bite Down on Crime, 8th pick. Super happy about that. Better than the Topiary Panther here. I just want to get all the good interactive removal spells. This is great. And now I might be interested in splashing the uh, Curious Cadaver here. There's also an agency corner. I don't think this card's that good, though. The Curious Cadaver. Do we generate clues at all? We have the Sharp-Eyed Rookie. We have the Loxodon Eavesdropper. I guess we don't generate a ton of clues, but I'm going to put it here in case we can go a little bit deep with that. The other Fester Leech tabled, so we are on track. And there's also a, v2, uh, a Gravestone Strider here that allows us to... Um, Potentially splash. Okay! I should have taken Buried in the Garden. Oh my god, I'm so... I've never opened this card. I have never, ever opened this card. Folks, we just opened the best Mythic Rare in the set. Aurelia's Vindicator is unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right, and if you've never seen this card before, it's a disguised creature for four mana and X, exile up to X other target creatures on the battlefield and or creature cards from graveyards. When this leaves the battlefield, return to exile cards to their owner's hand. Uh, Itrata is also cool, but let, oh, okay, obviously we're gonna take the Aurelia. One thing I found out about the Aurelia, by the way, is you can also exile cards in your graveyard. You can exile cards in your graveyard and when this creature dies, you get those creatures back. I didn't know that. I did not know that. This card is absolutely bonkers. All right, we have a tough pick here. There's Cryptic Coat. Our mana is not great. Or there's something just like a Tunnel Tipster that we can take for our deck. Um, there's also an Escape Tunnel that could help us splash. But I think the Tunnel Tipster is enough better that I can just take it. Um, I, you know, I'm going to take the responsible pick here. And... Take Cryptic Coat. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. All right. Well, now we are in the market for some mana fixing. All right. We're going to have... We have one pack. <laughs> we have one pack to find all the mana fixing. Okay. Uh, let's see uh, what we can do here. Um, the Loxodon Investigator or the Killer Among Us. What do we want? I mean, it's just Killer Among Us, right? This card is fantastic. Okay, all right. Um, this could have been a Tunnel Tipster, but come on. This could have been a Tunnel Tipster, but come on. That's the upside. This is also one of the best rares in this set. All right, what's helping me fix mana? I'm looking for things that help me fix mana. I'm taking Extract Confession here as another removal spell. <sighs> We're just not going to get it. We're not going to get it, it seems. We're not going to get it. I'll take this Illicit Masquerade. I don't really know what it does. When ETB is put in imposter, so you need lots of creatures. You need creatures in your yard. Whenever a creature control with an imposter counter on it dies, return up to one other target creature from your gra graveyard to the battlefield. Okay. Um, do I want to take Snarling Gorehound or Hedge Whisperer? I think I'll take the first Snarling Gorehound over the second Hedge Whisperer. Oh, wow. Locks it on eavesdropper table. <laughs> Look at this. It's just a purely black and green pack. Oh, man. Okay. We're going to have to make lots and lots of cuts here. Lots and lots of cuts. But it's definitely exciting. Kind of wish I took that Panther now. Oh, my gosh. I mean, we got to find a way to put the Vindicator in, but probably not going to play the Cryptic Coat. This might not be a clandestine Meddler deck. 
I mean, this feels like a deck that's trying to go long. Oh, oh, I'll... Do I take this? Do I have any red permanents? Killer Among Us is red. You know, I think I might just need the mana fixing here from the case. So I'll just take it. Yeah, even though it's kind of slow. It's a really bad Topiary Panther in my deck. But we do have Killer Among Us, which taps for three different colors of mana. Or gives us four colors of cards. And then we have some white cards. So maybe we can live the dream. Super unlikely to do so, by the way. But just maybe. There's a Gleaming Geardrick with three cards left, which is completely ridiculous. And sadly, I don't think we get to play this Cryptic Coat. I don't think we get to play this Cryptic Coat. I mean, we can try. But I just don't see, I just don't see our mana base allowing this to happen. We don't have any nervous gardeners. We had some option. We had some opportunities to take Topiary Panther, but man, I didn't expect to get the best rare in the set and the best blue rare in the set all in the same pack. All right, uh, this one is going to be a brew. Okay, so we got to cut eleven cards. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna cut all the blue stuff. Um, we don't have that many ways to make clues, so let's put that away. This doesn't feel like a good clandestine meddler deck, so let's put that over there. Um, Crowd Control Warden is definitely cuttable, but let's just put this in the three mana slot. Take a look at the rest of our curve here. I do, um, maybe we cut the Cryptic Coat. Illicit Masquerade. I just feel like you have to go through too many hoops to make that card work. And now this is what we have, and we need to cut seven more cards. Okay, so here's the question. Do we want to play something like Insidious Roots? We have double Rubble Bolt Maverick, a Gravestone Strider. How many? Uh, we have three, four, five. We have lots of ways to collect evidence, right? Three. We have five, six, nine cards that you can exile. Ten cards that you, where you can exile cards from the graveyard. So that allows you to just make a bunch of one twos, and it's not like we're playing too many just generically bad cards. Um, and we have lots of ways to kind of mill ourselves. So that's one approach. Right, we have double Fester Leech, double Maverick, Snarling Gorehound, five cheap things to put things into our graveyard. We have a lot of different ways to build this, and I, one of the options is to go really low to the ground and try to take advantage of Insidious Roots. But the other, the other strategy, which is something that I believe I'm going to favor here, is to try to actually just build a control deck that kind of goes to the late game. So if I cut the Insidious Roots, the Mavericks. Uh, maybe the Gorehound, maybe the Fester Leeches, and just try to draft just a more <laughs> reasonable deck, right? And uh, just two for one, my opponent's down. We have a Killer Among Us. That makes a bunch of tokens. Locks it on Eavesdropper, two for one. Glint Weaver gives you a ton of value. Fairy Snoop, two for one. Unscrupulous Agent, two for one. Aurelius Vindicator. This feels like the, the better way to build out what we're trying to do. And I think this is what I would rather go with here. We can still live the dream, by the way. We just need to find a killer among us. Uh, we just need to find a killer among us and, um, and then uh, fl flip up a crowd control warden or flip up a release vindicator. That what, I don't even know what it does. Target creature gets flying, double strike, and vigilance. All right. <laughs> I'm mostly doing it as a bad mana fixer, though. Yeah, I know I want to cut... I guess maybe we'll just shave one unscrupulous agent. I mean, I don't know why I'm so attached to the unscrupulous agent. All right, let's try this. That one took a little bit of time. I think there were a lot of different ways to go about building that deck. But let's try this. I could I could also play the Gorehound, but I'm the thing is I don't care so much about the body, so then it's just a matter of whether or not I want something that allows me to kind of Surveil every turn and figuring out if that's actually worth it. Keeping this hand here, we have Case of the Stash Skeleton turn two. That's the Gorehound. I mean, the Gorehound could honestly be better than one of our other cheap cards, right? It might be better than the Unscrupulous Agent. So we can get, we can revisit that. All right. Oh, we get to tutor with Case? Next turn. All right, here we drew the forest for the tunnel tipster, which is awesome. We now solve the case of the stash skeleton, so we can demonic tutor for the vindicator if we want. They play a face down card, and we're playing killer among us. P 
pick a different creature every time, of course. Cold Case Cracker and... All right. So we can tutor and play the Vindicator face down. And I don't think it reveals, so that's also good. Uh, I can kill the face down card. All right, well, let's, um, let's attack with the human. Let's give it plus three, plus three. Our opponent takes four. And then let's go ahead and search for something. I wonder if it's something, do I want something bigger here? Or do I just take the Vindicator? Is that a silly question? It's probably a silly question. Um, I mean, the thing is, I'm looking at a card like Glintweaver in this spot. But, I mean, let's just... Let's just play the face down card. <laughs> Look, I just I want to play my mythic, all right? Let me just play my mythic. Uh, we have a 4-4 in play. They might want to kill that anyways. It's a face down card. They're attacking with the cold case cracker. Wow. Okay. So, this tells me that they likely have the fairy snoop or not fairy snoop, the um the granite witness. The question is, when do I flip this up? <laughs> oh, man. I've never played with this card, so I don't know what to do with it. I mean, I can just turn it up and, and get them. Okay. This costs four. I can exile three things. Um. <laughs> I don't know why this makes me so excited. Oh, man. The thing is, if they just kill it, they get it all back, right? Oh, it goes back to their hand. Oh, my gosh. So bounce these three things. And this has ward two, and it takes their whole turn to kill. All right, here we go. <laughs> I'll kill those, Vert. Thank you very much. <gasps> yeah, it returns it to their hand too, not into play. What is this card? Oh my gosh. Like, they can't extract a confession, me. Okay, they killed it. Alright, they killed it. They killed it. They got their creatures back. They get to play the Gorehound. We're going to long it by this face down card. Oh, double Gorehound. Okay, that's fine. Because we can still just make a really big attack. So, we're still going to be pretty ahead on board. It's okay. I got to Angel. I got to fetch Angel and play Angel. I cannot complain. Here you go. Decline. Then, attack. Let's play face down card and pass. Like, what are they going to do? I have a 4 4 in play. I mean, they probably have to face down the Granite Witness, right? Oh my gosh, what a draw. All right. Well, they're still dead. They're going to play the Cold Case Cracker, and we're going to bite down on crime. <laughs> oh man. This was great. Oh, yep. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, opponent. Um, yeah, we um, we did the Vindicator thing. We did the Vindicator thing, and now we are 32. We're going to go first. Decent curve here. Sharp-Eyed Rookie, extract a confession. Oh, I forgot. I forgot about the... Um, 
maybe swapping in the Snarling Gorehound for Unscrupulous Agent. Probably do want the Gorehound, to be honest. Just, be, just to have a way to continue digging through my deck and try to find the Angel. Like, if you have an Angel, you should probably try to build your deck or skew your deck when you can to find the Angel. Sharp-eyed rookie here, but don't have any way to pump it just yet. It's actually kind of... It's more difficult than you would think to, to pump the sharp-eyed rookie. It seems like a pretty good card in Constructed, but in Limited, you know, so many of your three-mana cards are all just tutus, so it doesn't actually grow as quickly as you would like. So discard a Swamp here. Then let's play a face down creeper. If I drew something else, I would have probably played it over the creeper because playing a turn five is pretty nice. Case of the stashed skeleton. Homicide investigator is kind of annoying. I don't want to give them a clue. But I think I want to attack. I feel like I need to put pressure on. The thing is, if they block with the unscrupulous agent to get a clue... Okay. I don't really want to extract confession here. I'm probably going to wait till I can uh, collect evidence on this. And with triple extract, another reason to play the Gorehound. Is it... So, so then the question is, do I want to play Gorehound or do I want to play the, um, the detective, right? The Maverick, rather. The Maverick. Um, they're attacking me with Unscrupulous Agent? No, I'll just, whatever, I'll just take it. It seems like a bizarre attack, but they have a reason for that attack. So let's just not play into it if we can help it. Oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? I should have played the eavesdropper first. This is an out cold, it looks like. Okay, it didn't matter, but that was sloppy play on my side. Like, clearly, I should have played the investigator to grow the rookie. It's okay. We get two clues here, which is phenomenal. Looks like they're splashing green for something. I have a sneaking suspicion that it's Izoni. Never mind, they also have mountains. What? How do you play four colors in a blue-black deck? That's kind of tough. You look, it's week three. People are starting to get a little wonky. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, we are getting super wonky. Collect evidence three. Okay. Are they going to play a chalk outline here or something? Well, if we draw land, we can flip up the vengeful creeper and kill the cryptex. That's a face down card. Okay. Long goodbye is a fantastic draw. Um, hmm. the question is, do I want to give my eavesdropper vigilance? No, let's, we're winning the, the race here. So let's just go ahead and attack with our two creatures because I want to have access to double removal here if possible. Okay. So unscrupulous agent is chump blocking the homicide invest the eavesdropper. We're going to cast long goodbye on Homicide Investigator first, so they get less clues. So they won't get a clue off the agent. And then we can use Extract the Confession to kill the face down card. That seems pretty good. And now our opponent has no board, facing off Eavesdropper, a 2-1 Menace creature, a 3-3 Sharp-Eyed Rookie, and a Vengeful Creeper that'll face up next turn. So they need to play a Wrath here. And then if they do, we can use Case of the Stash Skeleton 
to go fetch our Aurelius Vindicator. All right, what are they doing? They cracked the a clue. Under City Eliminator, they can sack an artifact. They probably want to kill... Actually, I don't know what they would kill here. Is it the Eavesdropper? Because it's a 4-4, right? And it could trade with the Sharp-Eyed Rookie. Yeah, that makes sense. Land, please. All right, land here was great. I will play said land. And... Attack with everything. They're going to block the Sharp-Eyed Rookie. We're going to flip this up. Kill the Cryptex. And our opponent is at 3 life versus our Vengeful Creeper and our 2 Menace Creature. We have a couple of clues in play. Can start cashing that in if we can't find any relevant threats. And uh, we called the Azoni, didn't we? We called the Azoni. Ah. Uh, all right. That is the absolute perfect card. They're at three life. Um, I suppose I can crack a clue to find something. Okay, that, didn't, that, that was not me finding something. All right. So they're going to go to one. I can crack the other clue. All right, we drew a face down card at least. Wow. Yeah, Izoni is a heck of a magic card, as you all know at this point. They're at one life, though. If they attack us... Um, it is a lethal attack because we have a menace creature. So they need one more creature to play this turn. If they don't, then they're dead. If they do, well, we have a we have a we have an uphill battle. No creature. Of course creature. Okay. Well, we can we can eat most of these. Spider was a pretty good draw. Oh, okay. Spider was a pretty good draw. Uh, four, five, six. I have eight mana. I can tutor, and then I'll have six mana left. Hmm. Let's just play the spider. All right, so I want to add two counters there and probably one counter here. Attack, attack, attack. They get to kill my skeleton. They still have to block everything. They lose everything. They do have a Zoni in play still. We, we're, our skeleton is now gone, but we have two creatures in play. We solve case of the stash skeleton, and... Um, they get two more tokens here with Izoni, but we're at 17. We are playing against a lot of Izonis. We played against two Izonis the other day, but we beat it. We beat Izoni. No problem. No problem. All right, let's go back to the drawing board real quick here. I don't think it's going to be Hedge Whisperer. Let's cut maybe the Unscrupulous Agent, and let's instead play cards that allow us to find the um, Aurelius Vindicator. I don't really want the Fester Leech because I don't really want to mill the Vindicator. That'll feel really bad. So it might just be a Snarling Gorehound. Cryptic Code is phenomenal, obviously, but we can't play it really. And I want another cheap thing. Maybe it's just a Maverick and a Gorehound here. Just because I think a little bit of self-milling is also just pretty good with, um, like I said, a lot of our Collect Evidence cards, so... Let's try the one drops there. I do like the one drops though to help find the angel. Also, the they do help feed the graveyard a little bit to get a little extra value with the Vindicator. I know that's not as big of a thing. Decent hand here, sharp-eyed rookie. 
Although, might just play the Tunnel Tipster here, turn two instead. Yeah, let's just go with the Tipster. They have Counterspell mana up too. And this allows us to go extract the Confession into Sharp-Eyed Rookie next turn, which is great. Because they're going to play a face-down card here, most likely. And yeah, we got to go extract into Sharp-Eyed sharp, sharp -eyed Rookie. That's everything I want to do in life. And th that's one other great thing about the Extract the Rookie uh, Confession. You get to trade up on mana, which is very rare uh, when, when it comes to dealing with the face-down cards. And Extract allows you to do that. Paying two mana to kill a three mana card. Next turn, we get to slam the eavesdropper if they do not kill the sharp eyed rookie. Gleaming Gear Drake on the splash. Okay. All right. Well, let's just go ahead and play the eavesdropper here. That grows the sharp eyed rookie, and now the rookie can attack unimpeded. Do I attack with also the, my tunnel tipster? Try to slow them down a little bit. No, I kind of like... I have a lot to do with my mana. I kind of like the mana that I can get. Because this gives me six mana next turn. So I can bite down on crime. Plus play a big V2 Gazi Inspector. Yeah. Oh, they, play, they just played the best green rare in the set. Okay. We got a game here. We have a game here. What do I bite? They might crack this clue to attack for two in the air. I'm probably biting this Gleaming Gear Drake. But we'll see. I mean, do I bite anything? I can crack a clue and just attack with the eavesdropper. Cle killing the Gear Drake does seem pretty good. Oh, that's, um, that is a magic card, folks. Yeah, I'm going to attack with the eavesdropper because that trades, that'll trade with at least two things. I'll keep the sharp-eyed rookie back. Then we'll play a vindicator face down. That'll grow the tipster. They'll be able to grow the... Gleaming Gear Drake, which is fine. It's not that big of a threat right now. And we have a decent board as well. The question is just, what did they find with the Hide in Plain Sight, right? What did they find with Hide in Plain Sight? Also, I'm at 20. Could I have waited on the Aurelius Vindicator? The thing is, it's such a pain. Like, if I was my opponent, what am I killing here? Probably not the face down card. This eavesdropper is kind of annoying. It's a 4-4 Vigilance creature on the board. And you don't have to pay the ward cost to kill it. So might be interested in killing that. Could also kill Sharp-Eyed Rookie. This looks like a bite down. Yep. Okay. They have three cards in hand. Now, if this attacks, what do we do? So that's a Nervous Gardener. Okay. I guess we don't block. They get a nice sized attack in here. Now it's very tempting to flip over this angel for three and bash. <laughs> Not gonna lie. What is this? Andrag? What? So many options here. I think I just wanna kill the Andrag here. And the Gleaming Gear Drake. All right. Look, you play your rare, I get to play mine. It's only fair. Now they have to take a turn off to kill the Vindicator to replay everything. And then hopefully we can tempo them out. That's, that's kind of my plan. And then we can use Bite Down on Crime on Ansrag if they choose to replay that. They probably have a way to kill this uh, Vindicator. 
We have Glint Weaver too. Okay, face down card. Eavesdropper. Okay, I think that does it. Yeah, because we can just bite down on crime on the Vindicator now. Or we can actually just play Glint Weaver. Yeah, let's just do that. Put two counters there. And attack. Woo! All right. <laughs> Look, everybody's playing bomb rares here, right? Everybody's playing bomb rares. Our opponent played hide in plain sight. Last, last opponent played a zoni, but it's okay. We have our own. We have our own. We've got the best one. We've got the best one. And you can see how absolutely ridiculous this creature is. Oh my gosh. All right. We are in the 20s. Rank 27. Fine hand here. Extract Confession. Vitugazi Inspector. Ooh, we could really use an escape tunnel. If I had an escape tunnel... If I had an escape tunnel and a Nervous Gardener, if I had an escape tunnel and a Nervous Gardener, I probably would have played the um, Cryptic Coat. But I think our mana just didn't allow for it. Probably should have just taken the Tipster, to be honest. This is kind of interesting. What's the odds they find, a, they find something to grow the Sharp-Eyed Rookie? Because I really want to play the Tipster. Yeah, I don't want to get greedy here. Like, our our deck's trying to go long. Our deck's trying to go long, for the most part. So uh, I don't want our opponent to get any advantages there. If we draw land, we play the eavesdropper. If not, we play the tunnel tipster. So that was not the most impressive turn. So if our opponent our opponent can follow it up here, oh, fortunately, they did not punish us for basically playing a turn four tunnel tipster, which was not the strongest thing we can do. Um, and I am happy about that. Let's go ahead and play a 3-3. Three, three. Great on this battlefield so far. So if I don't draw land, do I draw a card off the eavesdropper? Probably not. I think it's just play another eavesdropper. Let's see what they do, though. If they play a large... Oh, three Thopters. Okay. Fortunately, I have this Inspector. Now I'm just hoping they don't have a pump spell. And they put two cards in the yard, two lands in the yard. So that fuss was really, really good for them. This Extract the Confession, admittedly, looking a little weak. Looking a little weak. All right, let's attack with the eavesdropper. I can flip down the vengeful creeper, but then I don't have a good follow-up play. I can face it up, but I like the ability to potentially kill a thopter later if I need to. Um... I mean, I can play this face down. That'll give me a 2-2 two -two tipster and crack the clue. That does make my eavesdropper a little bit worse, but it gives me the option to kill a thopter if that gets out of hand. Or I can play eavesdropper number... Two. Yeah, actually, I like eavesdropper number two. The reason being is now, next turn, I mean, we can try to outrace these thopters, right? We just crack a clue, get in for eight, and then on that turn, I can face down a different creature. But they have four cards in hand. They ramped. I'm expecting all kinds of haymakers here. This is a bite down on crime, killing Vitugazi Inspector. Okay. They're going to exile a fuss bother. Okay. Inside Source also gets to attack now. 
Neighborhood Guardian. And then another Cheap Creature? Oh my. What a turn. And they get to pump their Tutu here as well. All right, so this is an attack for nine. Interesting. I got to think about this just in terms of how I want to block. Like, what happens if I take 9? I mean, I think I just do take the 9. These are all just terrible blocks for me. I need my mana, and I don't want to trade my eavesdropper away. So, all right, you got me. Big attack. And... I believe I want to also attack for 8 here. Because that that at least puts a little bit of pressure on them, right? Okay. They played a Maverick. Extract the Confession does not do much here. So I am going to play, I could play Sharp-Eyed Rookie, but if I, by playing the Face Down Creeper, um, because they're going to put a counter on their Thopter, this puts a counter on Tipster, and then I can flip over the Creeper to kill the Thopter that has a plus one, plus one counter on it. Potentially. This is very close, though, because they have those Flyers. Wow, another bite down on crime? Come on. Okay. What are they putting the counter on? This is very interesting. Oh, they're not put okay, they're just playing sanitation automaton, and that's another way to pump their thing. Okay, that makes sense. All right, well, it does feel like we need to do some blocking here. Um, these are such unfavorable blocks, though, man. Is it just the tipster? If it's the tipster, if I block with the tipster, though, I mean, is it just the elephant? The elephant gets to get in. But I guess I'm not really going to be in a position to do that. All right, maybe it's that. I kind of want to minimize the damage here too, though, and stay at a healthy life total. But then what do I... If I don't draw a land, then what do I do? Maybe I take six? I really need to... Hmm. All right, let's just block like this. Hopefully we draw a land. Okay. I think we just keep this creature back. We're at eight life. Yeah, this is brutal. This is very, very rough. What other ways do I have to block flyers? I mean, I have the Vindicator. I have the Vindicator. So right now my plan is my opponent doesn't play too much. And we block one of their creatures, and then we face up a Vengeful Creeper to kill one of the Thopters. That at least slows things down. I can also cast Extract a Confession, but if I do, they can just sack Sanitation Automaton. So I probably don't even need to um, 
collect evidence when I cast extract the confession. Mentor of the Meek is a nice one. They're probably going to just pump all their Thopters, to be fair. All right, let's block the Guardian. This feels like an auspicious arrival, but we got to do what we got to do still. All right, we are at three life. We are at three life. They can put us down to one, which is not bad. I just don't, do I have any ways to gain life? Yeah, it's an auspicious arrival. No, good good play from the opponent. And now we're at one life. So um, I just don't see... Does that do anything? No. So let us... Crack a clue. Yeah, they just put far too much pressure on us. Okay, our opponent played that well. And... Um, the, the bite down on crimes with all the extra damage building up from the unicorn and the three flyers really just went a long way there. And our lack of just too many great answers to that. I mean, we had the inspector, but that's basically it. Oh, Glintweaver. Glintweaver would have been an awesome draw if we could find, if we could get the combination of mana to play it. So that, that was kind of one of our best draws. Had we found that, had we drawn that earlier, we would have not traded away with the tipster, maybe more aggressively sack clues to get to seven lands to be able to play the Glint Weaver. All right. This is an okay hand. We got the Maverick to help smooth out the draws a little bit. At this point, basically any land goes in the yard. Uh, what about, ext I'll keep extract. Extract is good early. We go turn two Tunnel Tipster into turn three Eavesdropper here. It's a great little curve. They're probably playing a face down card here. Yep. And we will play the Eavesdropper. I love me an Eavesdropper. This card is just, just perfect. The perfect mid-range creature. The perfect mid-range creature does exist. Face down card next turn would be awesome as that would allow us to go extract the confession into face down card. Oh, easy block. <laughs> you just played yourself. Not something you want to do. You don't want to, against a black deck, you don't want to leave yourself vulnerable to extract the confession there. You absolutely do not want to. But we're here for it. Let's make a big inspector. These are more utility creatures. Wow. I, <laughs> I cannot believe that happened. <laughs> Oh, man. This forensic researcher is doing a great job blocking. Let's see if they block. Damn, they found a line. All right, Sharp-Eyed Rookie into Glint Weaver next turn should be phenomenal. Obviously, that's, we're basically all in on that. We have nothing else. But it's a pretty good turn if you have nothing else, to be fair. The Forensic Researcher does give them access to mana. So they have five here. They can also tap stuff down. The Glinton Weaver will trigger the Sharp-Eyed Rookie too, which is nice. Hedge Maze from the opponent. 
four cards in hand. They kept on top. They can untap Hedge Maze and have access to five mana. Vengeful Creeper Face Up is the play. So... Can't play the Crowd Control Warden Face Up, so I can't get double activations here from the Sharp-Eyed Rookie. So I want to play Glint Weaver. I just don't know where I want to put the counters. I mean, I can just slam it all on the V2Gazi Inspector. Let's do that first. Okay. Um, yeah, this is actually really interesting. If I put everything on the Inspector and they kill it, then I'm left with a pretty, pretty meek board. It does let me attack for a good amount. I don't know. This one's actually super interesting. Yeah, let's do that. It just lets us get in a big attack. I don't think Vengeful Creeper is attacking. We're at 29. If they kill the Inspector, it's not the end of the world, and we still have two useful creatures. I don't want to put the counter on the Sharp-Eyed Rookie, because if they kill it, not only do they kill a creature that can get me ahead on cards, but, I mean, like going all in on the Rookie seems a lot worse than putting counters on the Inspector, because I could have made the Rookie a 6-6, right? Now, of course, they can tap this down for some number of turns, for at least two turns, so that's something to keep in mind. They have out cold here. Uh, okay. I suppose they're going to tap down my inspector, but then I get to attack for two. Oh! <laughs> That's actually a way to turn on my crowd control warden. I can play it face up. And then um, I can play it face up and get a card from the sharp-eyed rookie. I mean, they're going to tap down my inspector here, right? And then let's attack. Let's play the case. Let's go get our planes. Uh, really hope they don't have a counter spell, but we couldn't play around it anyways because we only have the tipster here. And I do really want to draw a card here off the rookie. All right, we got a 9-9 in play. Sharp-Eyed Rookie gets us another clue. They're bouncing it. They're bouncing crowd control ward, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. We get to play it again. Oh no, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't trigger the sharp-eyed rookie again. I don't believe. When it enters the battlefield, put X counters on it. Yeah. All right, benthic criminologists. They can crack the clue to draw a card. They have a five-five and a four-five. And evidence is... Ooh, okay. All right, so they're doing things there. Collecting evidence, drawing cards. And we don't have the most... Uh, we don't have the best board here. We'll see what they do, though. They're, I don't understand. I don't really understand this, but that's, that's fine. They're getting... They're getting unreasonably aggressive with Vengeful Creeper. That was a ridiculous draw. Bite down on crime. So now my question becomes, what do I kill? Hmm. Let's target the glint weaver. Actually, let's just... I'm going to kill the researcher. Whoa, okay. I'm going to kill the researcher. Yeah. Yeah. They can draw their clues, but I just don't want them to permanently tap stuff down. And then I can attack with the Glint Weaver. If they want to block with the Criminologist, go for it. And this allows us to just put maximum. The thing is, I would have been, I would have maybe considered killing the Examiner if 
they, they already got two clues off of this, right? So I would rather just kill something that affects the board more and deal with the res researcher there. Would like to draw a big creature here to pump my sharp-eyed rookie if possible. They're at five life. I mean, we just attack with everything. Let's uh, crack our clues. See if we find something. I do want to keep up five mana here to flip this up. The eavesdropper doesn't do much. So what happens if we attack with everything? This gets chumped here. This eats this. This eats this. And then they die to this. Okay, so this... Oh, it's not an alcohol. What if it's a bounce spell? So then four of my biggest creatures get dealt with. Could also attack with my two biggest creatures. Because why wouldn't they crack the clue? Because this is a lethal attack. All right, you know what? If they bounce something, they bounce something. We'll just go with that. Oh, our opponent hit us with a good game. Okay. I like that one. <laughs> okay, rank 27. Rank 27, we're currently sitting at, I believe, 4-1. and one. Okay. Three more to go? Three more to go? I'll keep. Extract a Confession uh, qualifies as a turn two play. By the way, I, I don't know I don't know what, what the algorithm's like, but I will say... Ooh, it was Lazav. I will say, whenever I get paired down, whenever I get paired down, I just... My opponents have had just completely ridiculous decks. <laughs> it's my theory. That's my theory. I'm like, they, they, there's something going on there where it's like, oh, their deck is absurd. We'll, we'll pair them against them. Ooh, long goodbye. It's a nice way to kill something. Oh, one, one note though, PSA, be very careful with long goodbye when your opponent has open mana. If they flip their creature up, if they flip their creature up, it, go, it's, it does not go well for you. Okay? I'm just going to say that. If they flip the creature up, this fizzles. If they reveal something that costs four or more. I'm going to kill the Sanguine Savior. Seems like a really great use of my mana that turn. And then we can just jam a killer among us. And then this creature also has Menace. So... I'm going to... I feel like Goblin this time. All right, I hope they don't have a Wrath. Okay. Goblin. I mean, you got to have something. You can't just roll over. Uh, we'll put the Goblin on the bottom. All right. Play a 5-5. Five five. Just keep putting pressure on. If they play a Wrath, I mean, we still have Case of the Stash Skeleton to go fetch us our Angel, potentially. Okay, all right, they're, they're fighting the good fight here. They are continuing to deal with our big threats. We are continuing to put pressure on. Let's go ahead and play this face down. And uh, yeah, I mean, we didn't really have to use our brain at all this game. What's nice, that I played a Morph? Case of the Gateway Express. Oh, skeleton down. Scary, scary. Scary, scary. Play the Gorehound first and smack them for seven. That was nice. Thank you. Um, <laughs> okay. All right, well, we'll take it. That was something. We didn't even move ranking. Our ranking did not move. We <laughs> All right, whatever. I'll just keep my mouth closed and uh, move on to round number seven. We're five and one. Ooh, that's a professional player. I think that's Shota? Shota Yasaoka. All right. 
I'm nervous now. I'm on the play. This hand isn't great, but I'll keep. All right. Well, we have the turn three crocodiles into bite down on crime. If they play a two drop, it, they get to play a two drop. Huh. The reason why I'm playing the tipster here is because I want to grow it. I want to get an extra counter here on the tipster. Oh, that's a very nice sequence. Play this face down. That was a really good draw. Long goodbye on the face down card. And then the tunnel tipster grows. And then we get to flip up the detective for a little bit of value, potentially. Crovod Haunch, that's it? And inside source, okay. Killer Among Us is great. We're gonna just play that instead. What a good draw. Uh oh, I chose Goblin twice. I chose Goblin twice. It's okay. This is all pre recorded. Shoda cannot see what we have. Cannot see what we have. Um. We're going to go ahead and attack with... Huh. What do I... Do I just attack with everything? Oh, they can, uh, they can make tokens with the Crobot Hunch. I do have to be mindful of that. Can't play the Glint Weaver just yet. We can, we can double Bite Down on Crime, but there's nothing I really want to Bite Down on Crime here. Let's go ahead and target the token here. And let's go flip up our creature. All right. So he could be setting up for like a big on, on the job turn here because he's looking to go pretty wide. So that's something that we need to consider when he makes a, if he makes a big attack. But we're also kind of out racing him from that spot if he does. Makeshift binding on the crocodile probably. Okay. And we have good blockers here for the tokens. So I don't really care about that. And then now we can just jam Glint Weaver. Um, and put counters on things. <laughs> well said, I know. Uh, where do I want to put counters? Definitely at least one on the one, at least one each on the one ones. I think this, the, to get the most damage in, like two on one and one on the other seems to make sense. Let's just bash. Whatever blocks you. I mean, this is just too much. Like, basically... I feel like our board is going to be so dominant here that a Wrath is kind of what he needs. But we'll see. I mean, he could, he could, I guess, go like multiple removal spells in a row. But he missed, he missed a couple of land drops and we had kind of... Our hand was okay and it got really good with Long Goodbye and a Killer Among Us. All right, so this feels like an out cold here. Um... So we'll just go ahead and wait. Let him cast out cold. And I'm going to crack my clue here first before deciding to attack. Because if I draw a five drop, I'll play the five drop probably. Okay, nope. So we're going to attack. And no, out cold definitely gets him back into, into this. We do have good removal here in bite down on crime plus extract the confession. He's cracking a clue. He has plenty of action though. So I really want to find another creature to play. That turn was kind of a whiff. Definitely. That turn was kind of a whiff. Ooh, Vengeful Creeper is really nice. The thing is though, the thing is I don't want to play into a Wrath. And I get a bunch of creatures in play next turn. So let's just go ahead and cast Bite Down on Crime, kill the Smuggler, and then attack for four. And this is more than enough of a board to kill him, right? We're so far ahead and he has so many cards. That's kind of the only way we lose. They, he can't just really play creatures here to win. All right. We beat the pot potential Pro Tour champion of the next uh, Pro Tour, Pro Tour Chicago. Nice. All right. He, he, got mana, he got mana screwed. We drew well. Let's not get too excited. Shoda is 10 times the player I will ever be. Shoda is a top. I don't know where you rank him. Where do you rank Shoda?
Where do you rank Shoda? This is always a fun talk to have while we have, while we, while we wait. Top five? Top five, top six. I'm going to do my quick ranking, all right? Quick, quick rankings. I'm not going to rank them. I'm just going to name the players, okay? But these are the names that come to mind. Finkel, Kai, Paulo, Nasif, LSV, and Shoda. So that is, that is, in my eyes, that is the top six. How you rank them, up to you. There are two tiers, though. Tier one. Tier one is Kai, John, and Paulo. They're in tier one. You can shuffle them around however you want, okay? You can shuffle them out. If you care about dominance, you go with Kai. Um, like, dominance for, like, the highest peak is Kai. Uh, if you want to go longevity, the Kareem effect, that's Paulo. And then John has just kind of had it all. John is like LeBron. <laughs> Sorry, I, I only, basketball is the sport I follow the most. So these are kind of the uh, analogies that I have. Anyways, they're all great. They're all great. Okay, this is for the trophy. For the trophy, opponent going first. Our hand is looking pretty decent here. We have, I'm not going to lie, we haven't mulliganed much and we've had decent draws. I dislike these lands greatly. This looks like an island to me every single time. Do I kill the tipster or do I kill... This is an interesting thing. I'm just going to kill the tipster. I'm not entirely sure that's correct. But a turn two tipster, I mean, they're going to play a lot of face down cards. It's going to grow. It's going to get kind of out of hand. So play the face down card here. And then we have the eavesdropper. I don't really care if this trades. All right. They don't really care if it trades either. They just pass with four mana up. That's interesting. Um, all right. Well, let's attack. Actually, I'm not going to attack. Not with that much mana up. <laughs> just, I'm, I'm a coward. Let's play our eavesdropper. It can't really go too wrong here. If they kill the eavesdropper. Um, all right. It's a murder on the eavesdropper. Sure. Now that they hit the five, fifth mana, though, they can attack pretty freely. Oh no, my clue! You jerk! Okay, I can't complain too much, can I? Cannot complain too much. I don't want. I don't think I want to play that yet, though. I think we're gonna play a patience game here. Do I want to just face up the Snoop? Yeah, let's face up the Snoop. This face down card. I mean, they have two cards here still. I kind of want to exhaust their resources. Let's see what this morph is. It's a 6-7 maybe. Oh my gosh, that's dirty. You're dirty. All right. Why did I play Gravestone Strider? Anyways. Let's play this and oh yeah. Let's take Oh, actually, that's interesting. <laughs> it, you know what's funny is like it's kind of like a combo. Crowd Control Warden is pretty big. I actually think I prefer the crowd control warden here because they have they have the ginormous creature right now. I'm going to play tipster here and um They have two cards in hand. I'm at 15. 
I mean, maybe, yeah, I think we just jammed the Vindicator. If they kill it, it'll be a little bit unfortunate. We're going to take five this turn. And then we're going to attack for a lot. I mean, I guess I could also play the Crowd Control Warden. No, they only have one card left now. Yeah, why don't we play the Crowd Control Warden and use that as kind of the last card for them to decide whether or not they want to kill it. Yeah, I like that. So let's play the Stash. We're at 10. Then we're going to face this up. Okay? We face this up. And that'll help determine what we do with this face down card. They have one card left. If they have a removal spell, they're almost certainly going to use it on the crowd control warden here as it is an 8-8. Eight eight. Then we can go exile a bunch of things they have. We can, we can uh, angel for three. Easy block. What, do you, what can they have? Toxin analysis? Oh, slice? All right. Hey, look. I am glad they used the slice. Snarling Gorehound. Okay. I'm glad they used the slice because now we're just going to we're gonna go nuts here. We're going to do this for four. Um, boom. One, two, three. And then we'll get a... We'll get a crowd control ward and it's gigantic. <laughs> Let's go Vindicator. Let's go Vindicator. Face down card. Let's hope it doesn't have flying. Okay. Um, I don't want to attack with the tipster. Oh my god, they found a flyer. Holy cow. That's insane. Okay. I mean, I feel like I got attacked. Like, they had five men up. I mean, they get a bunch of things back now. They get a bunch of things back now. It is what it is. We have eight mana. We have eight mana. Um, let's play a detective face down. And then let's play this face up. I mean, they're still at 10. But that was, <laughs> that was actually kind of incredible. So they can play the whip cracker. That actually kills my skeleton. They can play everything. They passed. They passed. What on earth is this card? I'm I'm genuinely Oh no, it's it's obviously Vengeful Creeper. I'm stupid. Yeah. It's obviously Vengeful Creeper. Yep. All right, let's just do that. Okay. Why didn't they play all their creatures? Okay. Woo! They just would rather die. <laughs> oh, man. And there you have it. There you have it. I'm really glad with how we sequenced that one. I'm really glad. And top 25. Top 25. Let's go. Back to back trophies. Feels nice. Once again, didn't draft an aggressive white strategy. We actually drafted black and ended up doing well. What a what a run. We got to play against one of the best players in the world and Shota Yasaoka outdrew him. And this was our deck. And man, was it nice. It drew really well. I don't actually know how good it was, but it can't be that bad when you have what? We have three rares in our deck. We have the best card in the set. 
and it did a lot of work. And I like the way that we sequenced that last game where, I mean, look, it's um, where we basically played the crowd control warden face up and made it so that my opponent had to have a way to kill the crowd control warden because it was the biggest creature on board. Uh, Case of the Stash Skeleton was just impressive. This is just a good card. Always take this pretty highly if you can. Two mana, two, one menace creature, great. If they double block or get rid of your skeleton at some point, boom, you get to tutor. And for us, we tutored for the Vindicator. We tutored for the Vindicator. But in this instance, as you can tell, we were primarily a green deck. Green still seems to be a color that's slightly underdrafted. At this point, everybody knows white is the best color and the deepest color. But I don't think so many people are on top of the fact that green is the second best color. People are still taking red cards before green. And, you know, as the format evolves, I think green and white are kind of neck and neck, right? There's no card in the format that's kind of on the level of Novice Inspector. But outside of that, green is just really, really deep. And you can have cards like the Eavesdropper, the Tunnel Tipster. I even like the Creeper, Bite Down on Crime, Nervous Gardener. There's just a bunch of green cards that you're always really happy playing in your deck. So this deck was great. Aurelius Vindicator, TLDR. I mean, there, look, I, there's nothing I can say about this card that you didn't already know. Just take it. Just take it and figure out your man. This is one of those cards, too. Even if you're like hard red black with no fixing, it's probably worth it to just take it and play two or three planes. Find out a way to make this work. That is how powerful this card is. This card is absolutely bananas. But really, really happy again with our result. We are having a lot of happy days. A 7-1 and one finish. We are now in the top 25. T 25 just seems like a ni nice number. And uh, we finally reached it. So I'm, I'm really glad about this. And, um, and hopefully next time, maybe we can crack the top 20 on our road to rank 1. Before I sign off, once again, if you've enjoyed this content, I did just launch my Patreon channel. Shout out to all my patrons currently. Uh, really do appreciate the support. If you did like this and wanted to help support the content that I make, check out the link in the description below. Anyways, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Feel free to hit the like or subscribe button for more videos just like this. I'll catch you tomorrow.